Hello guys and welcome to Steve Knows. I want to go over tips and tricks that I've discovered on my journey from going from easy mode to expert plus in Beat Saber. I'm someone that has actually gone through that journey when I first got a virtual reality headset on the PlayStation VR, playing on easy mode, all the way up to expert plus now on the Oculus Quest 2. And I was stuck for a long time on expert, but it wasn't until I adopted some of these tips and tricks that I was able to get to Expert Plus. There isn't just this magical method that's going to get you to Expert and Expert Plus. It's going to take practice and training, but these tips and tricks will hopefully get you there. They work for me. They've worked for others in my research to confirm what I'm about to tell you guys. So I have high hopes. I know you can do it. So I think enough chin wagging. Let's get started. Play the campaign first an obvious one that people seem to miss because they just want to dive straight into the game. But the campaign slowly ramps up the difficulty, ensuring that you know what the game has to offer, some of the game's cheeky modifiers, before giving you free reign to do how you please. You don't need to complete this, but there is enough there to help you get to hard mode at the very least. And from hard mode, it's time to try all of these tips that I'm going to show you to get to expert plus. The difficulty of easy to hard is really learning the game and just getting used to it and finding your rhythm. But what I'm about to show you can apply to any game mode to help you progress and get better at this game. Turn the debris off. Debris are the leftovers of the sliced blocks that you've just chopped in too. And this can become very messy when you're hitting more notes at a faster pace. And you'll want to focus on what notes are coming next. And the debris flying everywhere in front of your face does not help this. It will obscure your view. So in the game options, turn off the debris to give you a clear view of the runway in those harder difficulties. Slice it anyway. This is here because people tend to, when it gets crazy and they don't know what to do, just stop playing and try to find their footing again. But this is not a good thing to do because the way the power bar works that you have below the track here, when this depletes, you will fail the song. You fill this bar by hitting blocks successfully. If you ignore blocks and you don't hit anything, it drops much faster than you slicing the block in a wrong direction or with the wrong saber. So when in doubt, just slice anything when you're trying to find your footing. Look ahead. This is the next tip because when on harder difficulties, when you feel like things are going crazy and you've just lost your flow and you're trying to catch up again, swinging anything that comes at you in a frantic mess can be detrimental to you finding your flow again. Instead, sacrifice a decent cut on the blocks that are coming at you and look ahead and prepare your next move. You'll find that you'll get back into your flow again much faster and you'll be less flustered so you can continue the track in the best way possible. The game has a flow and a pattern. In this game, much more so in the later tracks that are not in the original song pack, the tracks have a flow and they'll contain patterns. It's not just a random set of blocks coming at you in any order. It's like a dance, it's choreographed, which you'll notice the more that you play. So go with that flow. Such as if a block needs slicing down and you slice it downwards, it's likely the next block isn't going to be down as well. So you don't keep slicing and resetting your position back to the center because that will make it harder to hit the next block. This is just something just to be aware of. There are also certain patterns which are going to be very important for you to learn in order to do well. The first is the crossover. Getting used to crossing over your arms, and this appears everywhere in harder levels, and it's a tough one to get your head around initially. But you can use some tips that I will mention soon to help you get over that hump. Another pattern is the rotary pattern, where you have up and down blocks that are apart horizontally. Instead of just going up and down and you're moving your arms side to side, you can just rotate your arms in a circular motion. And this means you don't have to move as fast or as frantic to hit those same blocks. If there are any other patterns that you think people should be aware of, please comment them down below so we can make sure they're heard. It's all in the wrists. When you first start playing Beat Saber, you'll move your forearm and your hands like a single unit, like you have no joints, but this just won't cut it for the higher difficulties. And yes, that was a bad pun. You need to use your wrists. When you move your arm with the addition of flicking your wrist, you'll find you can not only get bigger swings for higher scores, you can react faster to rapid blocks. The pivotal point on your wrist to the end of the Saber means a small wrist movement is actually a large movement in game. Less effort and better results. Use the wrists. Incremental improvements. Getting good at Beat Saber is not a sprint, it is a marathon, it takes practice and it takes time. 
This next system is what I did to get to Expert Plus. And Beat Saber also has some great tools available to you to help you train and prepare for these harder tracks. So I would play a track on let's say hard, then I would play hard with the fast modifier on so I could get used to reading the track at a faster pace. Because that becomes a very important skill when you're playing Expert and Expert Plus. Then when you attempt the next difficulty, which would be Expert, the pace of the track doesn't seem as daunting as it previously did. There is also a practice mode where you can speed up or slow down the track in increments at a much granular level. So next time you're struggling, perhaps reduce the speed by 5% or 10% so you can understand the patterns that are occurring and then put it back up to 100. Another thing you can do, which is pretty great the way that it works, is that you can actually speed up the track, put it to 120% or play the next difficulty up. Even though this is going to be much faster and much harder, when you reduce the difficulty again and go back to the track that you were trying to complete in the first place, it will seem slower, making it easier for you to complete. No fail. Don't be afraid to use the no fail modifier. It can be very handy. Use the no fail to play the harder difficulties that you just can't seem to beat, such as an expert plus Camellia song. This way you'll adapt to the very fast track and the faster movements, even if you do terribly on that track. It's progress in the right direction. A wise man once told me that if you're not struggling, you're not learning. Adjust the height. Some people may find this useful, but Beat Saber will assume your height in the options menu, and you can adjust this and make it so that you can look just above all of the blocks just a tiny bit, allowing you to get a better view of the blocks that are incoming. This can be advantageous as you know what's going to come next and you can slice accordingly. Sometimes the default height can restrict your view, and you can only see what block is coming next and the one after it, and that's it. And when you get to these higher difficulty tracks, you'll need to think ahead. Wrist weights, Goku training. I also adopted the Goku method of training that he used with Master Kai, so I will play Beat Saber with light wrist weights on, one kilogram or 0.5 kilograms, nothing too heavy as you don't want to damage any joints. And I also use ones that have a thumb grip so they don't move up and down on the arm, they're nice and secure. This is not only an incredible workout for Beat Saber, but it makes it harder for myself to hit notes for a longer period of time and to keep up the pace of these harder tracks. So it's great for building up my endurance, and once I take them off, I feel incredibly light, and I feel like I can move at the speed of light. You're going to need speed and stamina for these later tracks for sure. And finally, take it online. Take the competition online and face off against people in multiplayer. The competitive nature will help drive you to do better and focus. It will be the driving force behind your improvement. I know when I see someone overtake me and I'm in second place, I just try that little bit harder to be better and take back my spot. So play with friends or strangers online, it doesn't matter, and you should see improvement and increased motivation to do better. So that's it from me today, guys. Thanks for watching to the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed this one. I hope you're now going to dive into Beat Saber. You feel inspired and you're going to smash out some amazing songs and hopefully get to Expert Plus in no time. So please comment down below if you get to Expert Plus from following these tips. I'd like to hear your journey and also comment down below any other tips that you'd like to share with the community. Please subscribe to the channel so you can join me for next time, guys. Happy gaming. Good day.